my guest tonight is a fantastic singer and musician, a Berkeley graduate. She has been working in different aspects of the music industry while pursuing her own music career. Please welcome to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio, Kelsey, Kelsey Luo. Kelsey. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey. How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good down here. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, like I mentioned, this is the interview, what's well, actually interview number 44 for me. And I understand this is the, the first music interview that you're doing uh, with me. So I'm just okay. uh, honored that you're taking the time to talk about your music and everything that you've been up to. And we'll kind of um, just kind of work our way through the, the next 27 minutes, okay? Let's do it. All right, so with every guest that's been on the tour, I always start off with the pandemic because depending on where you're located, it's been different things for different people. And uh, you're located up north from me because I'm down here in Seattle. And yeah, so to each other. I live in Vancouver. Yeah. So how have things been, you know, during this time, like when it first started and where are you guys now in Vancouver up there in terms of the pandemic? Um, so the same time that, you know, everything shut down was also the same time that things ended for us. Well, things okay. shut down for us, which was March 17th. Uh, right now we're in our third phase right now. So a lot of restaurants and non-essential businesses have been open. Um, in terms of workplaces, a lot of my friends are working from home. Um, I'm in a different situation right now, but uh, yeah, there has been a spike in cases. I mean, our cases are relatively low compared to the U.S. At the same time, though, there have been daily cases going up and there have been, you know, like more people coming together. And um, actually our like people count has been, you know, like we are allowed to have gatherings of 50 people at this current moment, but we also have a spike in cases. So everything's just been really weird right now. It just, it, it, it doesn't really make sense, honestly. Yeah, no, I, um, that whole juxtaposition that you just talked about, like for you guys being able to have gatherings of 50, yet you have, yeah. you know, numbers going up. It's like, yeah. well, you can't have both. It's gotta be one or yeah, the other. Yeah, exactly. Really. It's like, it makes sense because they want people to like go out and support the economy, but at the same time, cases are going up. So things are a lot more lax here than they are in like, let's say LA, like my friends there, like they told me that the non-essential part of Target was shut down for a while. Whereas here, you know, it pretty much feels like you can still do things, just certain things are closed, but it's, it doesn't feel like as severe, you know? Okay. Yeah, no, I know uh, down here in Washington back in you know, early March when uh, they really started shutting down the schools and shutting everything else down, it was almost like that's when people started going into panic mode about buying all the toilet paper and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah, it was the same thing here in the beginning. Like the first month was like that, like for real, like don't go out, you know, stay home. And people were just like, like there was no toilet paper, no Lysol, everything was sold out. But then things gradually started getting better. Yeah, and that's, and that's where we're at here. I mean, obviously the numbers down here in the U.S. have been spiking all over the summer and uh, it's... I don't know what I don't really know what we're going to be doing at this point because it seems like every other day our governor's having a, a new press conference about something. Yeah, and it's just like, well, we're just going to keep doing what we can. The, the, I was outside earlier today running some errands, and um, most people were masked up like we're supposed to be, but there's some that weren't, and um, it's just kind of the, the state that we're in at this point. So we, we just kind of move forward with whatever we can, and um, obviously, uh, like in your case, I was interested because uh, I don't know if I've I may have talked to someone that uh, graduated from Berkeley, but uh, for those that aren't out there, for those that aren't out there, for those that are out there that aren't familiar with uh, the Berkeley School of Music, can you kind of explain um, what that school entails? It feels like so long ago. It was, it was, it was four <laughs> years ago, but um, it was it was weird because when I was in college, um, I was you know like just trying out new things, and I really wanted to be in a band and learn as much as I could. But at the same time, like. I feel like I took it for granted because, I mean, if I were to go back now, I would be way more focused and, you know, like I would just pay attention and just, you know, like not procrastinate, but I feel like I dicked around so much. And like a lot of what I learn in about the music industry is, you know, for, like hands on, like working in the music industry or, you know, just doing research online, like being a solo artist and stuff like that. And uh, I wish I had paid more attention, but um, it's a really good school and for in an academic sense, you learn a lot. And then there's 13 majors you can do. So there's focuses in what you wanted to do in music. But I feel like in terms of um, like career wise, uh, the school is not great for that. It's kind of like when you're done school, you're on your own. 
Ah, okay. All right. And uh, what did you, uh, what was your focus when you were there? Um, I did professional music and I focused on performance and music business. So before I graduated, um, job wise, I wanted to be and uh, work in his name. And then I realized, oh, I don't like, you know, a lot of music. And I thought, oh, I don't know. I just, you know, work in promotions. And I, and I did that and I wanted to be a booking agent. And then I realized how strenuous that job is, you know, like you work around the clock and it's, it's not like a, like a nine to five job. Like you, you work all the time. And I was just like, oh, why don't I, you know, now, you know, I'm like thinking of marketing, but like performance is like always my passion. That's what I've always wanted to do is, is play music. And I've been learning recently about video production, uh, video editing, graphic design, stuff like that to, you know, work up my technical skills because you can't be a musician and not know how to use like certain music software it's it goes hand in hand but like performing playing writing music like that's my passion that's what i love okay no and that, that makes a lot of sense that uh i know at some point someone had kind of poked me about maybe doing some promotion or some uh pr type of work and uh when i see yeah, out just like what you said you're working on weekends evenings you know all kinds of things and it just wasn't going to fit my schedule whatsoever um so it's like yeah i like doing this but i don't like it that much in terms of <laughs> taking that kind of that kind of thing on uh, plus i already had my own thing going with my own media outlet so it's kind of like yeah. i can't do this and take that on plus i have a day job and anything else so you're busy got, um yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, and sometimes that's good you know like during the pandemic it's been good um but there's other times where i need to veg out and kind of uh you know take a break and I, i'm getting better at taking a break but uh it's been a process for um, knowing where that balance is. And anyone that's out there that's watched these has heard me talk about balance umpteen times that it's, it's something I'm always you know striving for. Um, sure. But I'll so, <laughs> yeah. So when you were going, uh, when you're at Berkeley and you're, like you said, you love performing and uh, that's where your, your passion is. Um, did you start off like as a young kid playing music or taking lessons or singing or what, what, what kind of got you started? Um, I started taking piano lessons when I was five, and it was the only thing that I could focus on. So I just continued it. But I've always loved singing, but I never took lessons for it. I just did it for fun, even though I knew like that was my favorite thing to do in the world. And then I went to Berkeley, and that's when I got lessons. But I'm actually taking lessons right now, but for growls, like screams. So mm -hmm. I've been I've been working on that um, over the summer. So my my goal, like music wise, is to get really good at that and be able to scream all and sing all and put out heavier music. And it's it's a lot harder than singing. It's been a process. And while at that, I'm actually retraining my singing voice because um, I used to sing for my diaphragm and now I'm trying to sing for my solar plexus, which is the uterus part, because that's actually technically where the sound is supposed to come from. But most people don't realize that. So I've been retraining my voice to sing from there. So it's been like it's been a process, but I'm still doing it. Okay, and for people out there, we are going to be showing a clip in about maybe five or ten minutes of Kel from Kelsey. And uh, so you mentioned learning how to scream and growl and do that type of thing. So for people out there that aren't familiar with your music, how would you describe some of the things that you've uh, either done in the past, but also what you're trying to do in the future musically? Um, so what I've done currently is I describe my music as rock with gent influence because I'm really into like rock and like metalcore and prog metal and stuff like that. But currently my music is mostly rock centered. Uh, it's really melodic, it's emotive, um, it's, you know, introspective, but I definitely want to go in a heavier direction with screams because that's mostly what I listen to and that's mostly what I feel passionate about. So I'm trying to push it in a more like aggressive and technical direction. Okay, and uh, I'm just curious. I mean, I, I, the first bands I was ever into, this is, you know, many, many years ago, um, I'm, I'm definitely a metalhead, so when yeah. you're talking about screams and growls and I've seen and heard some of your music. So I kind of knew that's what, uh, there was like, no doing. screaming. You're like, what is she doing? <laughs> <laughs> Working behind the scenes. <laughs> where, so where did your, um, your love or interest, I mean, of that style of music come from the heavier stuff? Uh, it was definitely Evanescence for sure. Like people tell me I sound like Amy Lee, like all the time. Um, it was definitely them that got me into rock. It was my first time seeing like a female fronted rock band and she played piano. I was like, I play piano too. And I was like, this is so cool. And then eventually uh, I got into like emo, like Fall Out Boy and Taking Back Sunday, stuff like that. And then eventually I shifted over into post-hardcore when I heard like Sleeping With Sirens. And then I fell in love with Metalcore when Memphis Mayfire came out. And then Gent happened and I discovered like periphery and volumes. And now I still listen to the same music that I did like 10 years ago. Go. it's it's still the same thing yeah okay. just more advanced 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome that you're you're into the heavy things. I, I think that some people, if they saw you like right now, they might make the wrong assumption that maybe she's a pop artist or she. Hell did. no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love pop too. So. But yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of. Um, because I know since I've had some, you know, your photos online promoting this appearance and that kind of thing, I'm pretty sure some of the people that, that know me are thinking, oh, she's probably like an Asian pop person. It's like, no, <laughs> you're going to be surprised when you hear her, her clip of what, you know, the type it's, of music she does. It's easier to go the pop route, but I'm not trying to, like, my goal in music was never to be, like, rich and famous because, like, realistically, like, music nowadays it's so much harder to make a living off of it than 10 years ago when people were still paying for albums and and you know like cassettes back in the day you know things are a lot harder and different now now it's, it's mostly based off of shows and merch and stuff like that but for me it's mostly about being really good at the style of music and the niche that I do and just being a musician. That's pretty much it. Whether it's you know performing or you know the business side or teaching that that's what I want to do. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, just out of curiosity, what was your first show, your first concert that you saw? Oh, man, the first, that I ever saw in my yeah. life? Yeah. Oh, it was Evanescence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was 13, and I saw them at Pacific Coliseum in Vancouver, and it was a sold-out show. There was, like, 20,000 people. I think that's still one of the biggest shows that I've ever been to. I, nowadays, I don't like big shows like that, because a lot of the bands I listen to, they're not, like, you know, they're not mainstream and I prefer, you know, like smaller venues where you can actually see the artist and it's more intimate. But yeah, that ever since like my first live show at 13, that's like my favorite thing in the world. Going to shows like that's concerts. Like that's it. You and myself and the fans and everyone else that loves live music. That's why this this pandemic has been so hard when all yeah, that stuff got sure. ripped. Yeah. yeah. When it got ripped away from us that. Uh, it's like, no, now what am I going to do? I mean, it's, it's great to have live streaming. Obviously, I'm not going to knock that. And I'm a part of a live streaming tour, so I'm not going to knock it. Yeah. But it, we all know it can't replace actually physically being there yeah. in person. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some point, that's going to come back for all of us. But I'm, I'm with you that I started off with the bigger shows when I was younger. And then as I got a chance to see club shows and things of that nature, I really love the intimacy of it. And like you said, you can see the, you know, the marks on someone's face or the sweat coming down there and you're acting in that hole kind of sweat coming off the walls kind of deal. Um, yeah. I, I much prefer those to the huge arena outdoor stadium show. Mm -hmm. For so, sure. Yeah. Um, it's just, and here's another kind of thing just off the top of my head. Uh, do you remember what was the last concert you saw before the pandemic happened? Yeah, uh, it was Spirit Box. Have you heard of them? No, I haven't. They're um, a female-fronted like, metal band from Vancouver Island. They used to be at Russell Little Bear once, but they're, they're really big in Canada, and they're like they're definitely getting big. Um, that show was, well, my favorite show this year. It's probably one of the only shows I've seen this year before the pandemic happened, but they really inspire me because like the front woman, Courtney, she's an amazing vocalist. Like, she sings and she screams and um, yeah, I'm taking less of her screams, but just to, to see like how good they are with, you know, like social media, like they're always talking to their fans and, you know, like they consistently put out, sing I've noticed they've been putting out singles instead of albums because it's more relevant nowadays and how good they are with that. And I'm like, ah, shit with social media. I'm like, I'm like, so like I, if it weren't for music, I wouldn't even be on it. Like, I don't care, but it's like, like I need to step up my game. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I hear you. It's funny I, that we're talking about social media that you brought it up because I was just watching a video last night of, um, you know, you have people that monetize their YouTube channel, monetize their Instagram. And I'm kind of like, how did they get to this point of having, you know, 100,000 followers and this kind of thing? And they're making making money from it because I'm like, that's never, that's not how I think. It's more of like, I just doing this because I love doing it. And if people start watching stuff on YouTube or whatever, then that's great. But I don't uh, spend enough time with it. And I'm like you, if I didn't have eclectic arts going on, I would rarely be on social media because just it starts to annoy me after a while. Yeah, um, quite quite like, honestly, I'm a pretty private person, so like I don't really like that. So, yeah, and I'm it's a necessary evil for me. It's like, well, I need to promote stuff, and I need people to make sure that they understand what I'm doing, and I'm so on the peripheral. But yeah, if I was just uh, just me being Mark, we'd be like, yeah, what happened to Mark? I don't know. He's not on social media. <laughs> Where is he? And then you text him, you're like, okay, I can still get a hold of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's see here. You know, one thing I was going to ask you too before we get to your clip was that um, so when you were I, probably when you were at Berkeley or maybe right after Berkeley, I think you had done like a, a little bit of an internship working at Sumerian Records. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So were you kind of just learning the how the label ran and doing some of the like a little bit of everything there? Is that uh, it was for like social media promotion. 
Oh, okay. yeah. I was there for a short period of time. And then before that, I was um, also an intern at 604 Records in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, so then like you were saying earlier that a lot of the things that you were doing, it's like, well, you love performing first and foremost. So these other things like, well, maybe I can do that. And you saw what, what it entailed and it became, well. It's mostly like I need a job to pay my bills so I can continue to pursue music. Yeah. The, the creative, <laughs> the creative conundrum that we all, <laughs> that we all face. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, but, you know, another thing too, especially with uh, the protests that have been happening during the pandemic and everything, and uh, being a person of color and also being female, have you kind of run into any kind of things off the top have. of your head yeah. that have been p- good or bad um, that you good can talk bad. about? Um, not good, um, but bad, yes. Uh, I remember when the virus, when people first started like hearing about the virus and it first came on the news, I remember like I was standing at the bus stop and this kid like rode by on his bike and he was like, coronavirus. And I was like, wait, what? Like, who was that person? And I looked over at him and he was looking at me and I'm just like, am I experiencing racism right now at like 27? Like this is actually happening. Wow. That's, that's, that's awful. Yeah. Um, I've, I haven't had anybody say anything directly to me, but I definitely had the look for me being Asian. Yeah. Uh, I feel that way too. And so, and that's, um, and actually there's one area not far from where I live that's had some, some racial issues and people don't think of this area as having those kind of problems. But it's like, no, it's everywhere. It's yeah. absolutely yeah. everywhere. Um, and something else I learned too is that, for uh, females, it seems that, and you could just be somebody that has a little bit of notoriety or a lot of notoriety. They get, you know, all kinds of crazy DMs sent to them through social media and other kind of mm-hmm. things that from, from complete strangers that most guys don't have to deal with. Yeah. Um, do you see that? You're kind of nodding. So like, has that happened to you? Oh, yeah, you on a get- daily basis, and I just ignore it. I'm used to it. It's like whatever. I don't even think about it. <sighs> It's seeing it for the, I don't know, probably it was maybe three or four years ago when I was talking to just, just a friend of mine, um, not connected to music or anything else. I was talking about, I'm so tired of these messages. I'm like, what are you talking? I thought she was talking about text messages. <laughs> and, and she was like, no, you know, when I'm on social media, I'll get this crap in my inbox. And she showed me some of them. And I was just dumbfounded by the kind of just nasty stuff that was, again, sent by strangers just People based on a picture. fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, and they're yeah. they're they're disgusting and they're out of place um, mm-hmm. with that kind of thing. So uh, that's that's unfortunate. That I don't understand how like big artists like they get just like messages in general. I don't even know how they can like take care and like manage their social media from like day to day. On top of those like random like explicit messages, like how do they even do that? You know, I always wonder. Yeah, no, I see. And for me, being on the side that I'm on, I have to realize that sometimes when I'm reaching out to an artist that they're dealing with all that crap. So when something legitimate comes through, like my request, sometimes it gets lumped in there because they're just kind of scrolling through stuff. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, this is actually somebody who actually wants to do an interview about my work. Mm -hmm. Not someone talking about the outfit that I wear. Exactly. Pictures or things of that nature. I can usually tell right off the bat, if it's a long message, it's music related. If it's a short message, it's usually something else. Wow. Wow. Well, hey, this, this gets to showing your clip. Can you kind of tell people out there what we're going to be watching for the next three and a half minutes? Yeah. So um, my friend Cesar Marenko and I, we did um, a gen cover of Joji's Slow Dancing in the Dark. Have you heard that song? You know what? I have not until I heard your version of it. So yeah, it's, um, it's a cover by an R&B artist and he started off with the YouTube channel called Filthy Frank, which is like this he was, he's like this character called pink guy and he dresses up and he pulls like all sorts of like really really fucked up pranks like eating human vomit and, and like you know like just playing with aliens and it's it's really fucked up but I found his music through a filthy Frank and I was like oh I like this and that song was like beautiful and I had to do a cover of it and yeah that's that's what it is all right so if the fine folks down in LA can uh, run the clip from Kelsey uh let's roll it right now please Don't follow me, you'll end up 
held her back. So though that was a, a chance to see what Kelsey's been up to. And that was very recent. And that Kelsey, you were just telling me during the song um, how that video came to be. So can you kind of speak to that? You said a friend was shooting that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was the first, like, I guess, professional looking cover I'd done. So he filmed the video for me and we shot it like the first time it was like, um, like forward, like face on. The second time it was from the side. And then I took the clips and then I put them together. But I noticed that during the course. So I was standing like behind my mirror and I realized that my cereal box was showing. So I had to zoom into the video to take that out. But I went on YouTube to try to find a way to like, like um, blur that out or like to add it as a cutaway, um, which I s it's really hard to do in iMovie. Um, mm. I know most people use Premiere, but this is like the first time I've ever video edited. So I will forever like watch back on this video years from now and be like, oh, that cereal box, you know, I'm just going to remember that. Like I took it out. But what also like is really funny is that there's a snowman in the background. So it was my first time like recognizing that foreground is just as important as, you know, like, you know, like the video itself. So. Yeah, well, you know, you live and learn and uh, those, those kind of things as you move along. I know, like we were talking earlier, that when I was watching some of those YouTube tutorials, they're talking about, don't worry about your early two videos because everyone's going to look back at them and go like, man, look at that thing that I did. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't even celebrate Christmas and there's a snowman on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, so do you have another cover or something original that you're going to be working on uh, here in the future? Yeah, for sure. So I'm actually getting my old EP remixed and remastered because um, the first time I did it, it was it was the first time I'd, I'd ever put out like music. And my friend and I, we, we really rushed it because we when I did it, like I was in Canada and he was in L.A. and we recorded before I left. So that's getting redone. And right now I'm, I'm just in the process of getting better at my screen vocals because the next time that I want to put out more music of my own, it's going to have screams in it. So in the meantime, I've been doing these covers. Okay. Yeah. No, and you know, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of guests that are doing that. I'm thinking about one who's been doing a lot of drum covers in the meantime because he can't mm -hmm. do anything original with his band right now. Um, and or that doesn't make sense to do too much because they can't tour for it. So it's like, well, I'm just going to keep keeping myself out there by like doing band, like like band live streams, you know, yeah, like separate places. Yeah, that type of thing where they can kind of collaborate. Uh, yeah, through the beauty of the internet and technology and that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, so I'm thinking when you were talking about screams and that kind of thing, and, uh, and you mentioned the one band that's, uh, up there on, off of Vancouver Island, are you also into someone like, um, like Elisa from Arch Enemy or, you know, um, those type of screamers that's too? That's really or? interesting because, um, I have a lot of respect for those female screamers. I'm not necessarily like really into that style of music. I'm more into like gent and metalcore and prog metal and stuff like that. But like technique wise, like they're incredible. Okay. Okay. So I think most of the bands I listen to are fronted by males. Okay. Okay. That makes I feel sense. Like there's not a lot of females within like metalcore and prog metal and stuff like that, but it it's coming up. I feel like slowly there's been more and more. Yeah. You know, now that I think about it. Yeah. I think you're right in terms of that. That's actually a great thing that you're in that. That's the style that you like because hmm. you could be one of the, the front runners of that style in terms of being female doing that type of vocal. Um, in those genres of music. Yeah, I wouldn't be the first, but it would be, it would be cool. It would be different, you know? Yeah, and uh, so you're working on covers. Is there anything else that's coming up in the future that you want to plug in the next uh, minute or so? I definitely want to do a live stream once. Uh, I want to do have like my screams ready and then have like one proper cover with it. And then after that, I'm going to be like, okay, my screams are good. Like I finally have the technique to do, to do what I want and then I'm going to do a live stream. So that's something awesome. I'm really looking forward to. Okay, that's awesome. And, and um, when you've been taking lessons for screams, has that been like a once a week kind of a thing? or? Uh, yeah, it's been more like once every two weeks, depending on her schedule, because um, the girl that I work with is really busy, but she is so good. Like her name is Hannah Ribble, and she went to Musicians Institute. Um, I met her through a mutual friend, and she is she is so good. Like I think more people should learn from her. Um, I think she could totally like, have like a, a full roster of students because you know there's not a lot of females teaching unclean vocals but she does a really good job with it amazing well hey 
for your first interview. How, how did you do? Or how did I do? I guess is a better question. No, you did great. Um, I'm so glad I didn't fumble. I mean, like, I feel a lot better now. It's still a little awkward because, you know, I'm usually anxious, but like, I feel better. I feel, I feel good knowing that like, okay, this is what an interview is like. Like I'm going to, this is what I'm going to take and learn going to future ones. There you go. The first one's out of the way. Now the other ones will get a little bit easier for you. Yeah. Now people know more about me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Kelsey, thank you so much for taking the time tonight and uh, I wish you well up there and stay safe and um, interested in following your career, especially with all the kind of music that I'm into and that you do. So yeah. um, what kind of bands are you into off the top of your head? Sorry I if like, I'm getting into your time. Yeah. I like all kinds of bands, but I am kind of running long here. So maybe we could talk yeah. offline about that. kind yeah, of Yeah, for sure. Again, take yeah. care and uh, I'll so see much. you soon. Appreciate it. Yeah. See ya. Bye-bye.